So are you having iPhone 10 FOMO? Are you staring at your slightly older, say iPhone 8, <laughs> it's not no, an iPhone 7 and thinking, maybe it's time to upgrade? If you are to upgrade, do you go to an iPhone 10 or do you go with an iPhone 8? I've been using the iPhone 10 for a few days or iPhone X for a few days, depending on how you're reading my script. And it's been pretty great. And so it's been very difficult to come up with five reasons why I think you shouldn't go with the iPhone 10. Now I'm gonna come across as being anti-Apple in this video, but here's the thing. Apple wants you to buy the iPhone 10. And as a responsible reviewer, I have to make sure that's truly the case. I'm going to go through the five reasons then, and they are ranked from least to most important. And then I'm gonna talk about why I've been really drawn to the iPhone X. And it's really not that much. Reason number five not to get the iPhone 10 is the cost. The cheapest iPhone 10 is gonna cost you 999 US dollars to buy outright. Even more depending on the currency exchange rate in the country that you're living in. In Canada, I pay close to $1,400. Now, the iPhone 10 is $200 more than the iPhone 8 Plus and $300 more than the iPhone 8. So the price difference is significant. For $999, you could buy a brand new MacBook Air. And let's be honest, you're probably going to be more productive with an actual laptop. So the question you have to ask yourself, what more am I getting for the extra $300? What will I be able to do with the iPhone 10 that I can't do on the iPhone 8 or 8 Plus or even a 7 for that matter? Here's another kicker when it comes to cost. With an Apple Care, the cost to replace an accidentally broken iPhone X is astronomical. It's almost as much as a brand new iPhone 8. Yikes. So what are some of the things that you get for an extra $300? Now, before I continue on, give that some thought. What are some of the things that come to the top of my mind that for an extra $300 uh, you get with the iPhone 10? I bet you there's not a lot of things that come to mind. Off the top of my mind is that you get OIS on the second telephoto lens. You get an OLED screen, which looks great, but it only looks great when compared to another iPhone side by side. You do get a stainless steel frame, which looks a little different than all the other iPhones, but that's not as cool, especially when you cover it with a case. And there is this face ID camera that allows you to animate your face into a poop emoji. Go and emojis. Yay, I'm a unicorn. Now at the end of the day, it's just another iPhone, which is reason number four not to get the iPhone 10. The iPhone 10 is just another iPhone. There's nothing magical about it. If you're not a techie, all these brand new fringe features, I'll say won't matter to you at all. Don't get sucked into the marketing fluff. If you want to make a good educated decision, actually go to Apple's website and use their comparison tool as you can scroll through the differences between each model and you'll be and you'll be surprised there isn't really that much difference. One of the things I felt while I was unboxing the iPhone 10 in my video, unbox video, was just how familiar it was. It didn't feel any different. The packaging wasn't, any, wasn't, wasn't anything different. There was nothing special about it because Apple's just treating it as another iteration of the iPhone, which it just is. My life hasn't changed greatly with the iPhone 10, so, so certain features I've noticed are very awesome, uh, like the Face ID camera, which we'll talk about next, which is another reason not to get it. But I compare this to another Apple product, the AirPods. I unboxed these things, man, they look like Apple white buds, sure, whatever, but after using them for three days, I knew this little white uh, thing was gonna change how I listen to music across all my devices. This was an amazing product. This, yeah, still just another app iPhone. Reason number three not to get the iPhone 10 is, well, Face ID. Now, <laughs> why am I saying Face ID is a reason not to get it? Isn't it one of the standout features of the new iPhone 10? Don't get me wrong, I do like the feature of it, but if I was to look at it logically, it's just an evolution of Touch ID. And the job of Touch ID and Face ID is to secure your phone, your passwords, and Apple Pay. So don't let this facial recognition camera thing be the driving factor in spending an extra $300 on an iPhone. Even if you can animate your face into a poop emoji. As a side note, if you want to know how sensitive the Face ID is, well, when it comes to detecting your face, check out the video I did uh, the day I got my iPhone X. Spoiler alert, it will detect this grody gray beard. Before I get to the top two reasons, if you're finding this video uh, entertaining or useful, give it a thumbs up. If you know somebody who has an older iPhone and they're looking to upgrade and they're trying to decide between the 8, 8 Plus, and the 10, just send this video to them because I think it's worthwhile to, you know, engage in healthy internal conversation when you're trying to figure out how to spend your thousand dollars, right? So it's, it's a lot of money. So being able to rationally say, this is stupid, I don't want that, I don't need that, um, is a very good thing for consumers in general, I think.
Reason number two not to get the iPhone 10 is that iOS, in my opinion, isn't really optimized for the new screen. This is the main reason why I wouldn't get an iPhone 10 if I wasn't reviewing products and I knew about this reason. Why? Because the apps don't look great with the new iPhone X. The OLED screen looks amazing when placed side by side against an iPhone 8. But look at all the empty space at the bottom of the Facebook app. There's lots of dead space and, you know, in an era where UI reigns supreme, that dead space seems like a fatal flaw. Now look at Safari. Scrolling through a web page is pretty awesome because awesome, it's almost top to bottom um, when you're looking at text but the moment that you want to switch between tabs uh, you get to see the bottom which has a ton of dead space again now the top of the iPhone X doesn't bother me as much because the extra space actually is filled up with you know time cell strength Wi-Fi signals and battery widgets but you don't have that for the bottom of the iPhone 10 and now that I've kind of picked it apart it stands out even more than the black strip with the face ID camera in it but like those are very minute things and that's me being very picky the big Biggest thing I think when it comes to iOS not being optimized uh, for the iPhone 10 is the fact that the 5.8 inch screen isn't actually 5.8 inches. It's much smaller. In some cases, it's actually smaller than the iPhone 8 screen. Let that sink in. An extra $300 and you get less screen space. Yikes. Now this problem is specifically for games. So in order for games to show up properly on the iPhone 10, Apple had to scale it down. The scaling is pretty brutal because Apple not only had to scale down and uh, from the top and from the bottom, they also had to scale from the side to take into account the virtual home swipe area as well. Which is why gaming on the iPhone 10 is gonna suck. And which is why I say iOS for the iPhone X isn't optimized. If you're a gamer and you're trying to choose between an iPhone 10 and an iPhone 8, I'd actually go with the iPhone 8 Plus. Sure, it technically has a smaller LED LCD screen, but at least your games are gonna be bigger. It's, there's not as much dead space um, on the iPhone 8 Plus as there is on the iPhone 10. Reason number one is that you're gonna to have to learn how to use an iPhone again. There is a bit of a learning curve for the iPhone 10. Everything is slightly different. Here's a list of things that I've had to adjust between the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10. Pressing the home button to unlock the device. Face ID is quick enough to mitigate this problem, but I still, every once in a while, press uh, the, la the non-existent touch ID button. Number two is that the camera is accessible directly on the lock screen, but it requires a force touch rather than a tap. Now the old method of accessing your camera by swiping right still exists. And as a side note, I do like having the flashlights uh, button right there, and it's kind of the same thing. You need to use a force touch uh, with it rather than a tap. Third thing I had to adjust is that the control center is now accessed from the top right corner rather than the bottom. So yeah, that took a lot of effort to figure out in my mind. Number five is that Siri is now accessed through the oversized power sleep button, which kinda, I think that works a little better than just pressing down the touch, bu touch ID button on the iPhone 8s. And the last one is that the home swipe area will change orientation depending on the last application that you used. So if you put your iPhone to sleep on a game, the home swipe button will be on the side of the iPhone. I always found myself double tapping every single time I logged onto my iPhone 8 to make sure that I just go straight to the a home screen, whereas and I can't do that anymore, which is annoying. Now, none of these things are big deal breakers, I'll say, when it comes to accessing your iPhone. They're very different, but none of them kind of would make me say, oh my gosh, this isn't gonna work out for me. But then I think of it from a perspective of my parents who keep losing their emails or passwords to their emails or have a hard time trying to swipe right to get to the camera or go through the entire process of finding the actual camera app to use the camera, I think, my parents would have a hard time adjusting to the iPhone X. It would probably take them like three, four months. And you know, it's $300 more. It's gonna take you more time to adjust to it. Those are just not great reasons to get the iPhone 10. Now, I'm not quite sure what Apple's gonna do. Maybe this is a one-off. Remember the iPhone 5C? That was kind of a one-off in terms of physical design. So maybe we won't see this for the iPhone 9 or iPhone 11 or whatever they decide to do or iPhone X1. I. Now for me personally, the coolest thing about the iPhone X, the Face ID camera is pretty neat. It is quick. I think it's going to be quicker than the Touch ID. I'm still working on that video. But being able to animate my face into a poop emoji, that's actually kind of funny. And I've done it twice now. And is it worth the extra $300? Probably not. Now Face ID is probably the coolest thing. And you know, I did say it's a reason not to get it. But for me, being a techie, I like seeing this stuff in action. And so being able to unlock my phone with my face, but not only just my face, I have to look at it. So this camera is smart enough to detect my attention. And so I'm excited for that day 
when that technology gets ported to the laptops because I spend so much time working on the laptop and having to move my mouse and click on these tiny battery widgets at the top just to see more information, being able to just look at that area and being able to open up a widget area without having to click on it, I think that's gonna be very powerful. It will save you know one to two clicks every single time and you know over a span of a day, maybe it'll save me one to two minutes. But you know with all these uh, processor improvements, that's all you're doing is just saving one to two seconds a day kind of thing. So that to me is why I'm so excited to use the uh, iPhone 10. Am I missing any other reasons? Leave them in the comments section below. Um, you can find me on Google Plus. Uh, I won't say Google Plus anymore. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. Do check out my website. I've got a ton of iPhone X uh, case reviews on there going up pretty soon. So uh, thanks for watching.